I'm gonna start this. Pray for me. I don't even know what I'm doing right now, but this is happening. I've read part of the uh, like intro. I don't even know who wrote it, uh, but there's been already a whole bunch of grammar problems, and I'm not excited for this. But I'm gonna do it for you guys because I love you and I hate myself. All right, guys, so I've made it about 100 pages into Handbook for Asshats, and it's bad. It is as bad as I expected it to be. The most notable things I am realizing so far is that for Linguini Salem, the ability to write a sentence without adding at least eight to 40 extra words, impossible. She has to overload every single sentence. And as someone who likes flowery writing, I feel like I would enjoy it if every single one of those words actually did something for the storyline. No, they don't. They literally are there for no fucking reason and could have been gutted. I honestly think this book could probably be like a hundred pages long, but it's so bloated with extra words that don't have to be there and extra references that don't have to be there that it, it's just 400 pages long. So that's that's where we're at. That's my opinion so far. And I will come back soon. Honestly, this book gets a one star because the main character is not a fan of beards. It's her opinion, but she's in fact completely wrong. She's just wrong. In case you're wondering if there's girl hate in this book. Yes. Yes, there is. All right, guys. Well, it is a few hours later and I am now... 195 pages into this book and it doesn't seem like there's a plot there's been no world building and all the characters are terrible people and I hate myself so hopefully you guys like this fucking video all right I finished it this book shouldn't exist much less have made it onto the New York Times bestselling list actual trash there's there's no actual plot at all things just happen and it's not good at all. And I don't, I don't know how anyone could have convinced anyone that it was good. Get ready to be fed because this review is going to be fucking fire. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie. If you're new here, I hope your day is going well. I did it, guys. I read the most hated book on booktube. Handbook for asshats. Wait, that doesn't seem right. Let's try that again. Handbook for tricking the New York Times bestselling list. That seems closer. Handbook for white feminism. Now that seems correct, but I don't think that's actually what we're looking for. Handbook for Mortals by Lego Maiego. Okay, y'all, so I found this book at a local used bookstore in my hometown of Vegas. And I thought to myself, Maddie, you can't pick this book up and just do a rant review for it. <laughs> Honestly, guys, my brain saw this book and went, ooh, content. And I, I, I'm here to uh, tell you guys about what this book is and what it is not. Let's get into it. I love the fact that I also picked this up. And on top of, you know, being a terrible writer, <laughs> Lainey Serum actually uh, wrote her signing on the end page and this book was never read like I was definitely the first person to touch this book and I'm not gonna put on blast the name of the personalization because it's probably either one of this author's friends or like on top of not being able to write she doesn't know how to sign books because that's not where you sign a book <laughs> I know some of you guys wanted a drunk review for hitting 5k um, but it's like 10 a.m. and I don't have any alcohol in my house and I'm not gonna go get alcohol uh, to uh, rant about this book and it's already gonna be a crazy ride. Get your alcohol beverage of choice if you would like to. I'm drinking coffee. So here we are. I read this book in about three to four hours of straight torture porn and go ahead and strap in and get ready for this useless review. So if you're unaware of what this book like controversy is, let me give you a quickie breakdown. This book showed up out of nowhere on the New York Times bestselling list at the number one spot on, on August 15th, 2017. And within 23 hours, the YA community have found out that the publisher that had been created specifically to promote this book 
had actually bought out 18,000 copies to get it at the one, number one spot on the young adult bestselling list, which actually knocked down The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, which had been at the number one spot for 25 weeks and counting. Now, the author Linguini Spaghetti actually created a movie script for this book originally. She was going to actually star in the big time adaptation of this book, and she thought it was going to become the next big Twilight. They honestly believe that young adult readers would like look past the lack of plot and the terrible writing and make this book a phenomenon. Now the one thing that Laryngitis Stanley Hansen didn't realize is that those books like Twilight and Harry Potter and all these big franchises actually come from books that are written really well, like decently well, and actually had a huge following before their movie productions show up out of nowhere. And honestly thinking that this book is anywhere close to Harry Potter is just fucking laughable. And also, even the cover is plagiarized. Like, that's just amazing. And the funny part about this is the last rent review I did for After was actually set in my home state of Washington, and now this book is set in Vegas, my, like, my home as of almost a year, which is crazy. But I just, I love the fact that these books are set in very easy to adapt places and manage to get the places they're set in completely wrong. But you came here for a review and I'll give that to you. I knew pretty much nothing about this book going into it at all. Like I, I honestly had no interest in it until I found a copy, which is usually how these reviews work, let's be real. So going in, I found out that this is, book is about Zayd, which is actually short for Scheherazade, which makes no sense and is borderline racist. Zayd is our not even a little bit subtle self-insert for Lampoon Salsa. And if you wanted pages and pages of description about what this woman looks like, oh boy, you should read this book. This woman describes herself in minute detail when starting off the novel about a girl of indeterminate age moving to Vegas away from her mom to become a trapeze artist and practice her magic that ends with a K. I'm honestly surprised she left off the last two. So all of that happens in chapter zero because what the fuck is a prologue? And from then on, there is no plot. This quickly becomes a plain white tease fanfic. And honestly, that band and this review have a lot in common, starting with that they both haven't been relevant for years. Say is just your average girl who has literally never gone on a date before and suddenly has two guys interested in her. Which is funny because literally every single character tells her she's beautiful all the goddamn time. I also, I never get this fake humble shit in books. Books, by the way, for fuck's sake, Lasso Sega Potato spends like paragraphs describing what this character looks like, and you can't tell me that if all these other characters are telling you you're beautiful, that you don't find yourself at least a little bit narcissistic at times. You're not fooling anybody. When I feel like I'm unattractive, it's because I am, and no guy out here is gonna be like, ooh, baby, your skin doesn't look like it's seen the sun for five days, and you've got depression sweat coating your body, let's get it on. And also, ladies and gentle beans, guys that go for the I don't think I'm attractive thing are like 90% predators, so. Speaking of predators, the main love interest is creepy as fuck, and he just stares at Zayd while she's getting changed into a costume half naked, and that's pretty much all you need to know about him. I enjoyed the other uh, love interest much more, um, until I realized he was actually Jackson Rathbone, written into the novel by this author, who apparently managed his band. I hate the fact that she's making me cancel Jasper from Twilight. Rip Jackson Rathbone, he isn't dead. He just let himself be written into this god-awful novel. I also want to know where Max's inspiration came from, the other uh, love interest. What else is better than Jasper from Twilight, right? He's what? He's Superman? Fuck. So for the rest of the book, it's like a tug of war of will they, won't they on Zayd with these two guys, which is pretty fucking boring. Lavish Sambuka is credited for comparing herself to E.L. James, the author of Fifty Shades of Grey. And I have to say though, that there is no non-consensual spanking in this book. <laughs> Honestly, even the kissing scene sounds like she's narrating a nature documentary about a wet pancake. Everything about this book sounds like it was written in 2002, put in a time capsule, and then released in 2017. Complete with a ridiculous Carrot Top cameo, which apparently only exists because he was one of the four editors that read a, this over for Laudem and Saltine Gregor. I honestly think that 13-year-old Maddie could have walked into a Hot Topic, come out wearing a Come to the Dark Side We Have Cookies t-shirt, yes that's a reference from the book, and a novel that's written better than this fucking garbage. This book was just brain rottingly bad. I'm never advocating for people to go read the books that I rant review, but please don't read this book even for science purposes. It, it It's not good. To be honest, I probably could have just 
done some research and watched a whole bunch of reviews and then just made a video for you guys on like what Lasinge Snoodle has been doing since this happened. But I found this book, so I made this review and read this content and it, it's bad. I'm definitely not fucking with you when I just think that this is just like ink symbols on dead tree slices. It's not a book. It's not a novel. There's no plot. There's no story. There's no world building whatso fucking ever. I also think that Lamborghini Snoot has a issue with women. Like a huge issue. This book has more case of not like other girls itis than any other book that I've ever fucking read. I don't know if she's got some sort of bone to pick with other females, but this woman definitely has said, I only hang out with guys. They're less drama. And she believes that shit with her whole heart and soul. I also was watching another video because apparently she was going to make the movie production all female led and as if that was like a reason for this book to get made into a movie. Honestly, just basing off the conversations that Zayd has with other characters in this book, I don't honestly think that could have even possibly been an option for this movie. There is no healthy relationships between women or relationships at all between women in this book. Speaking of unhealthy relationships between women, there's actually a, a scene in this book where a fight takes place between the main character and a teenager, which is the only teenager in the book, mind you, over a boy who works at hot dog on a stick. Now, I've got to be clear with you guys. I have never read a young adult book about a woman who lives in Vegas who is somehow a trapeze artist as well as a friend of a whole bunch of D-list celebrities and who also fights teenagers at fast food joints. But I really just can't get behind this whole concept that Lainey was pushing that the YA book community was like harshing on her mellow and not adding new voices to the mix. Like there's this paranormal-ish love triangle book and then there's The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas which is about the police brutality and systemic racism in USA right now. You know, one of these is a, an award-winning book that deserves, nay, requires the attention that the New York Times bestselling spot deems possible and it isn't this fucking garbage. And which is, this doesn't add anything to anyone at all. Nothing of value in this book that could have had merit to cheating the New York Times bestselling list. On top of all of this, it is 2019 and this woman still has a racial slur in her Twitter username. And she also uses this word frequently in the book and does not seem to have any concept about why she should not be using it. I do honestly believe not a single person who has read actual books read this novel before they decided to publish it. The writing is just god fucking awful. When it comes to writing, you should err on the side of caution and go with the less is more approach. But Latex Salem obviously uses the age old writing technique of why use 10 words when you could use 40? There's a section where Zayd is literally explaining why she's making Game of Thrones reference to herself and there's about 45 extra words than necessary. Also, adult men coo at the main character as if she's a baby, and when I say that I throw up in my mouth a little bit, I'm not fucking with you. I also love that the foreword of this book is written by a international best-selling adult romance author. Her words, not mine. And when she read this book, she knew it was good because she had written good books. <laughs> See uh, the Bayou Stick series on Goodreads. How much do you want to bet that there's the incest kink in this book? I'm sorry if I'm just reading off the screen. I have notes, but you guys know how this works. I legit think everyone involved in this book series was on some sort of crack cocaine, and this is what we got from it. I wanted to find out what Lager Saliva had been doing over the course of the last few years, and honestly, I couldn't find anything about what she's been doing. She did a few like podcasts and stuff like that, but I didn't really listen to those. I'll have other things that I found linked down below, um, but I just wanted to get this out for you guys as soon as possible. I did find out that she, uh, she was in a movie called Trailer Park Shark, and I'm not quite sure why she spent 200 pages describing what she looked like when those three words do just a great job. And that was a little mean. I never in my entire life try and make jokes about a author's appearance. I don't think it's classy humor, but I do honestly believe that this group of people that made this shit happen don't deserve the basic etiquette that they didn't afford us when they decided to fucking buy out a whole bunch of copies of this shitty ass book to beat out a book that de it deserves to have been at that spot for as long as goddamn possible. But you know what? If Geek Nation, the publishing company that made this possible, wants to buy out 18,000 copies of, un of my unfinished novel, uh, just send me the royalty check. I'd be down. And I think you guys would enjoy my novel much more 
It does have a love triangle. It is paranormal-ish, but there's no sightings of any famous person or thing, and the magic doesn't end in a K, and there are no racist slurs. I also, um, went on and found some interesting good Goodreads reviews that were positive because I, I have heard that there was like an influx of positive reviews trying to outsource all of the negative reviews that people had about this book on Goodreads. Um, and I found one that I'm not even quite sure if this person is a friend of the authors or what. Um, but the end of this review is quite hilarious. It says something along the lines of like Trump won best of luck next time enter kids and I just think that's quite hilarious considering the impeachment inquiry that just happened so this book has nothing to do with politics mind you I don't even know why this person who is just making this review public out there uh talking about Trump regarding this book but um that's where we're ending the review I guess all right guys, so that was whatever the garbage this was. So I'm gonna go now. If you like this video, please let me know down below in the comments. I'm gonna go now guys, like subscribe, all the good stuff, bye. Oh, I did this a little too soon, that's fine.